began when a dragon moved into the neighborhood. The dragon sent a note to my father, the king, saying that he must have a princess to devour, or else he'd destroy the kingdom with his fiery breath. Perhaps we'd better advertise for a knight to slay the dragon. That's what's generally done in these cases. I'm afraid we haven't time. The dragon has only given us until tomorrow morning. We'll have to send him the princess. Rubbish. Dragons can't tell the difference between princesses and anyone else. Use your common sense. He's just asking for me because he's a snob. That may be so, but if we don't send you along, he'll destroy the kingdom. I see I'll have to do with this myself. I took my largest and godliest state robe and stuffed it with straw, then tied it together with string. Into the center of my bundle, I poured a hundred pounds of gunpowder. Then I had two strong men take it up to the dragon's cave. Come out, dragon. Here's the princess. <laughs> Dragons are not very bright. A few days later, Lord Garp of Istvan visited our castle. My dear, just see who is here. I see. It's Lord Garp. He wants to marry you. I'm very flattered. Thank you, Lord Garp. Just let me talk to my father in private for a minute. Oh, of course, my dear. <laughs> I don't want to marry him, father. What will he do if I refuse? Lord Garp is rich, greedy, and has supernatural powers. He will be insulted if you don't marry him, and will probably declare war on us. And then there will be trouble. Very well. We must be practical. My lord, as you know, it is customary for a princess to set tasks for anyone who wishes to marry her. Surely, you wouldn't like me to break that custom. And you are bold and powerful enough, I know, to perform any task. <laughs> that, that is, is true. <laughs> name, name your task. <sighs> Very well. Bring me a cloak made from the skins of the salamanders who live in the volcano of Scoria. The volcano of Scoria is covered with red-hot lava and burns steadily with great flames. Poisonous smoke pours from it so that no one can come within a mile of it. I felt certain that Lord Garp would fail at this task. Nevertheless, in a week, Lord Garp was back. <laughs> Here's your cloak, my dear. <laughs> it's beautiful. Use your head, miss. Lord Garp never climbed the red-hot slopes of the volcano of Scoria. Here's what I think of your cloak. Oh. That cloak was a fake, my lord. The skins of salamanders who can live in the volcano of Scoria wouldn't burn in a little fire like that. Oh, no, <laughs> So be it. I can't have you. No one shall. <laughs> when I finally caught my breath, I found myself in a room at the top of a tower. Ha-ha-ha! So you are safe and snug, are you? <laughs> and will you marry me now? <laughs> never! Then stay there until never comes. <laughs> My only hope was that a prince might come by and rescue me. On the third day, I tried to pull myself together. I realized if I waited for a prince to rescue me, I might be there forever. Be practical, I told myself. If there's any rescuing to be done, I'd have to do it myself. There was something I had yet to try. The door. To my surprise, it opened. I explored the corridor outside. The first two doors led into cells just like mine. They were empty. 
I came to the last one. I went inside. Six million and twelve. Six million thirteen. Six million fourteen. Good heavens. Six million fifteen. Six million sixteen. What? Oh, six million seventeen. What on earth is the matter with you? Who are you? I, I, I am Prince Perian, the rightful ruler of... Oh, dear, here I go again. Six million and nineteen. Wake up! Wake up! <clears throat> oh, of, of Istren, but Lord Garp has put me under a spell. I have to count sheep jumping over a fence, and, and this puts me to sleep, sleep. Dear me, I must do something. Ow! Listen, it's quite simple. It's all in your mind, you see? You are imagining the sheep jumping over the fence. No, don't go to sleep again. Ow! This is what you must do. Imagine them jumping backwards. As you do, count them backwards. And when you get to one, you'll be wide awake. Ow! Will it work? It's bound to. If the sheep going one way will put you to sleep, their going back again will wake you up. All right, I'll give it a try. Six million and seventeen, six million and sixteen, six... Oh, my goodness. Count by hundreds or you'll never get there. Six million and fourteen, seven, 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 what are you doing here? Lord Garp has imprisoned me here because I will not marry him. One more crime of Lord Garp's. We must escape and see that he is punished. As far as I can tell, there is no stair in this tower. And the outside wall is much too smooth to climb down. What we need is a long rope. Use your common sense. We haven't any rope. Oh. But we do have your beard. I knew if I could just reach the ground, I might find a ladder or a hidden stair. If all else failed, I could go for help. Ah, hey, you meddlesome fool. I'll teach you to interfere. <laughs> Prince Perrion was not hurt at all, but it was the end of Lord Garp. We rode back to Istvan, where Prince Perrion asked me to marry him. Before I said yes, I asked him to get a haircut and a shave so that I could see what he really looked like. I thought it was the practical thing.